there everyone it's Chris Petrie welcome we're gonna have a really fantastic time today we're gonna do some still life we're gonna work on um, a uh, duck decoy with some paint to uh, some watercolor uh, uh, tubes of paint and a paintbrush and a small fishing uh, 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 line uh, and tackle so um, basically these things I, I recently purchased a few uh, duck decoys, so this is what I have. The one that I'm going to paint today is a little smaller than this, but this is a full-size uh, wooden duck decoy. It's the real thing. It's an antique, a vintage uh, duck decoy. It's got the glass eye and um, all the beautiful carvings, and this is a beautifully made uh, duck decoy. So I have this across from me, and of course, just the um, I have a uh, some fishing tackle and uh, some tubes of paint and a paintbrush, a regular uh, artist's uh, watercolor brush. So we'll use those things, we'll set them on, we'll set those on a typical uh, backdrop like I usually use which is uh, two pieces of large white foam board taped together. This is a mini version of it so I have this set up on the table across from me um, to my right and then I have a desk lamp, a high intensity bulb in there and that goes on top shining down on the um, subject matter, the uh, still life. So that's uh, the setup we have across from us. And we're going to be ready to get right in here and do a really um, fun and loose uh, contour drawing and then we'll um, get right into the painting. So now here what I'm going to do is do a preliminary drawing. Uh, usually I like to do a super light preliminary uh, drawing first a sketch of just a kind of a layout of how everything's going to look inside the uh, rectangle, the um, picture space. So we have the picture space drawn out in pencil. And now I'm going to look across from me and I'm going to try to get an idea. I want to crowd this uh, rectangle with um, subject, with my still life, with my uh, subject matter. So I'm going to do this now by doing a super light preliminary sketch. So I'm just going to some shadow there so I'll, I'll contour draw. I think I'm actually just going to use this as my contour drawing because it's going pretty good and I kind of see that this will be the right kind of uh, this will be the right layout for everything and That's the back of the table and then we're going to come around here and I'm going to do the tackle. And that's the first tube, and then we're going to come over here. The other one is here, approximately. And 
and then the paintbrush will kind of Okay, so that's uh, the contour drawing, and uh, it, it looks good. It's um, I had to, I had to adjust things sometimes. Like sometimes, if you're doing a still life and you're drawing within a rectangle, and you find that it's a little cr uh, things have changed a little bit, and you might have crowded in something a little too much. I moved some of these items in a little bit, so they were a little further out uh, on the on the board. On the foam board these were a little further out this way and I snuck them and pushed them in this way a little closer to the duct decoy um, so that um, I can get everything into the um, picture here to the uh, rectangle so sometimes if you have to be creative and, and make a, a little adjustment you can just do that that's not a big deal um, you're the artist you can feel free to change things around the way you think um, they should be And we have nice fresh clean water, a uh, sponge to uh, check off some of the water uh, if we need to, and fresh uh, squeezed uh, paints right in here. I just filled up my uh, colors. Some of my colors were uh, needed some paint, so I just uh, added some fresh uh, tube paint right in there. And let's begin uh, our painting. So now I'm going to look across from me and a lot of the things that I'm looking at, the paint, the tubes of paint are very simple color wise. I kind of know what they're going to, you know, this one is cerulean blue, this one is yellow ochre. So I just use those two colors and that is good for that. Um, the shadow colors, I'll just mix a little bit of a grayish color. And um, this is uh, red and green, simple enough. A black brush with um, uh, some brown uh, uh, hair for the brush, um, the brush hair is here, and then the decoy is a dark blue and a burgundy color up here, and uh, and then like a uh, kind of a grayish tan color in the center. So uh, I'll start with um, maybe I'll start with the uh, duck decoy. So that is um, I'll make a nice dark here. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, and a little bit of uh, Burnt Sienna. That makes a pretty good dark. Dark blue, almost like a black. And I'm going to be I put a little green in there too. Now I'm going to start adding uh, more color to the uh, mix just so I can keep things varied. A little bit of red. And then this is going to be burgundy, so I'll go with burnt sienna, blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson too, burnt umber. And some
I'm trying to concentrate here. This is uh, the colors are challenging. I'm trying to keep the mixes going here, and uh, so I and there's also some shadowing here, so I got to go with a little bit of a darker mix here. And that's a shadow as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I have it close to what's what's in front of me here. As far as the colors and the tonal values look pretty good. And so we'll continue on. We have the shadow in, which is good underneath the uh, decoy. And I just went over the um, tube of paint here a little bit, so I won't worry about that too much. Try to add to that shadow a little bit there. Okay, I'm going to go into another dark. Uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. We'll get the paintbrush in here. And what I'd like to do is I'll do the shadow after this dries a little bit on the uh, brush. And the brush hairs will go with uh, some uh, burnt umber and uh, yellow ochre. Do a little shadowing. Okay, we'll do the cerulean blue now. These are fun to do the uh, tubes of paint and I would let this dry the um, these two sections here with the uh, cerulean blue paint I would let those dry first and then we can come back in and add some shadows to this um, so again we're working with um, timing on when we're going to put shadows in and where they go so if, if you keep the simple idea in, in mind um, which is always good and I always do this myself I'm always trying to just keep aware of in the back of our minds aware of where the paint is and how how wet or dry the paint is so we know if there's a certain section where the paint is still wet we might want to wait until it dries a little bit before we go back in does that make sense so that would be here we can go with the shadow under this section which is not a problem 
but if we were to try to paint in here maybe we might run the the risk of maybe having this we could try and see how it works here this is a little bit of shadowing here so I'll go in and just I'm trying to see where that shadow is so it actually worked pretty good there that's okay And then we're going to do our uh, tackle here. So that's uh, that's some uh, cadmium red and some uh, alizarin crimson. A little bit of uh, raw umber. Then it looks like we have um, some olive green. This is uh, sap green, actually. And then we have a little bit darker green. So I'll take some regular sap green and add just a little bit of French ultramarine blue to it to make it darker. That's maybe too dark, so we'll go back and add a little more green. That looks about right. And sometimes if I... If I go out of bounds, in a sense, uh, with the lines, no big deal. I just make the item a little bit uh, larger. So this this tackle here, I'll leave this a little bit uh, larger instead of um, worrying too much about um, that I went outside of the lines and made it a little larger. And then I just And that's uh, and then I can we can add in the shadow with some uh, cobalt blue, a little bit of mineral violet, a little bit of cerulean. should dry a little lighter. That'll dry a little lighter. Sometimes your uh, shadow colors might be a little dark when you first put them on, but they'll lighten up a little bit. So if you, that's another thing we always, we always try to keep that in mind in watercolor. You hear a lot of watercolor artists always say that, that things dry lighter, and they do. So whenever, whenever we're putting on paint, definitely we, we always think in our mind it's going to dry a little lighter. Usually, you know, maybe 30, 40 percent, depends on the color, but so the shadow I just put under here is going to get lighter. And then we'll, I'm going to go over here and do some sh shadowing on the uh, paintbrush. And this is uh, always I try to maybe add a little bit of a variation in color even in the shadows so I'll go back in here quick and just do a couple changes to the shadow colors um, also if you think you might have uh, an issue where a shadow is going to be too much too dark you could lighten up the uh, you can lighten up the the other uh, the other item that's next to the shadow. So now here I'm going to try to just lift a little bit of paint on this fishing tackle. That 
that's just a little difficult. Um, probably should have went with a lighter. Um, and I, we can we can also do this. We can lighten up the shadow by just take some clean water, tap off a little bit of the water on a tissue, and then just go and just lightly go over the shadow a few times with the water. Okay, and that's looking up all right. And then I'll just put the uh, the tin, the aluminum, on the paint tubes at the top of the tube. Maybe I'll go and get a little darker tone with some, uh, and just give it those uh, quick little. And then there's some writing on the tube, so maybe I'll just do a quick little... And a little more uh, variation in colors here. So we're getting there now. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of uh, yellow ochre or some raw sienna to the brush a little bit. Then I'll just mix up a little bit of paint here and I'll just to just to give some color here, a little bit of a interesting look here. just to add some color. A little bit of tone to the, to the uh, light. Okay, that is uh, looking good. And uh, we'll do one more detail here. We'll All right, that looks good. I'm, I'm happy with this here. This is um, a quick uh, a 
a quick fun uh, contour drawing with painting and it's a duck decoy with some tubes of paint and uh, it's a lot of fun to do great practice it's great uh, for quick compositions and um, lots of colors and then again too we can practice different things um, and practice up on uh, different subject matter so um, hope you all have fun with this I hope you'll try this two or three times just to get the feel for it and uh, have fun with it and we'll see you next time bye for now